everyone welcome back to our channel this is a chainsaw milled fence that my daughter and i made from logs that we cut out of the mountains with our permit with our national um, forest service permit and this is pine that i also stained 8.6 using my motor oil that came on my car when i had my um car oil changed it has little spaces in it because it is live edge and I'm okay with it and Maria's okay with it because it's going, we're growing a thicket on the other side of this too with native species such as choke cherries, June berries, buffalo berries, wild plums, and also some common lilacs that will hopefully grow real big and it's going to fill in the spaces anyways and grow above the fence. We use railroad ties for the posts and these are oak railroad ties so if you're going to get railroad ties and you have a choice get the oak so you don't have to do this again in your lifetime, hopefully. The pine, I've heard, will, well, everything is gonna decompose, right? But the pine, we know, will go a lot faster. I've heard even in like 10 years. So I don't really wanna do this again in 10 years. Hopefully I won't have to. A few mistakes I learned um, along the way is I should have had, I chose to have the beautiful side facing out. I thought, why not? The planks will probably cover it up anyways. But then I realized that this is the really, really good side for screwing in the boards that go this way. So I should have had it turned. And once I realized that, I did turn them to go this side facing out because this doesn't have to take any screws. But one way that I fixed that problem is I put in some right angles. You can kind of see them. And I attached that to the board. So that will just be extra assurance that these boards going across are still going across and I kept the metal t-post in there because if we had a fire or if something happened to the wood you still have a metal fence so this fence can stand alone without the rubber ties just they, it did stand alone because we had this standing for a couple years first or a year or two just the fencing with the t-post so yeah, I really, I, I like how it look, looks. I like the privacy it gives. And we'll take a look at the other side. This is the outside of the fence. Before we do that, I'll show you this, this year fence. I mean, last year it's been up over a year and it weathered well. It went through the winter with no problems. We had some heavy snow, heavy wind, and it's just been fine. So this here is made from white pine. And this was a log, a big couple logs that were wind blown down in the Bighorn Mountains. And I used my permit to cut them right there because the log was very thick and heavy and big. And we wouldn't have been able to lift it in our truck anyways. The other logs from this year, I chose to bring home and do it at home. That way I could chainsaw a plank and then let my chainsaw cool down and then do other things, come back and just at my leisure make the planks this though was made in the mountains and the motivation behind this was i wanted to keep i want privacy and dust control but um we did have some cats and even a dog a couple dogs got in at night this area and i love animals of all kinds but it's just easier if animals that shouldn't be here stay out and animals that are animals of course we always want to stay in um but the two dogs that came in had been on the run for like five miles because there were fireworks and they came in they gave them a place for the night and i stayed up with them in my garage all night to keep them company because i couldn't bring them in my house and i'm glad i could help them out and we found their owners so everything turned out great but we really need to keep animals out and we need to keep cats out that aren't ours so good things start with a little problem right and I, I'm like a solution person, and this has been the solution. I'm really, really happy with it. So this is the other side of where it all started, um, where a couple dogs got in and cats were coming in. And I thought one day, I'm just gonna put up a um, plank chainsaw fence. And so this is where it began, and I, I chose to keep put a wire fence in. So no matter what, if things come off, that would still be there if a plank came off. So yeah, this is the white pine. And 
what I'm gonna do is before winter, well winter, we're on borrowed time here. We're like getting mid-October, end of October, and we've just had bonus time this year to get a lot of outdoor work done. And I'm gonna put some linseed oil on it because the first coat was motor oil when I had my truck oil changed i just said could i please keep the old oil i want to reuse it and repurpose it one more time and that's what i used to stain it but this year i'll do linseed oil because i also don't want it to keep getting darker i really like the color and the linseed oil won't really darken it up this is the other side of our opening to um to our gate and oh and one thing i learned i really like the natural look on that other side i when it when I finished putting all the planks up, I took my chainsaw and leveled it off all perfect. I realized I didn't really like that. I like the wild look, the natural. And of course I like the live edge look. For this section, I chose to overlap it to get the full privacy. And over there, I chose to keep the live edges. We don't need the full privacy. It's just perfect, I think, the way it is. It'll allow wind to come through if it needs to. And we're growing the thicket of native plants. We have a second fence we put up. We started with the six foot fence there um, so our guardian dogs could be out here. And then we wanted the privacy and the cut down on dust and cut down on rocks and, and coming in and just privacy. Who doesn't like some more privacy, right? So we put this fence in and this goes all the way around the side yard so that we could make a thicket here. So that's why this is here to protect our choke cherries. A lot of, we put a lot of native species plants in here. Choke cherries, June berries, buffalo berries, wild plum, and of course one of my favorites is some common lilacs. So they're gonna get real big. The plan is this will be a thicket. So we're okay with the spacing on here. These are live edge planks that I cut. I have the slabs which are the top of the the log that I easily could put in between on the outside so you'd have a full privacy but I like it for the wind factor too you know the wind could get through if it really had to if you get a 90 mile an hour wind I think that will help the fence that it has that um, little spaces yeah and once the thicket grows it's gonna be perfect anyways so that's why we got double fence and maybe it's even triple fence because like I said we kept the the woven wire just for safety so if a plank ever came off it's still dog proof nothing's going out nothing's coming in we last year we put up a um, privacy shield and those are really nice too so as we're building our fence and they just go up with zip ties and it lasted through the winter if you don't use thick zip ties you will have to replace them um, and you cut your zip ties. I don't have those cut because I just put that up last night. <laughs> so it doesn't look so well yet. It's folded over. I have a privacy shield that's coming that will be the correct size um, that we need. Because like I said, we're, we stopped for the year. This little fairyland forest that we <laughs> fenced off is a dwarf lilac. This is a beautiful choke cherry that it's just the time of year you can't really see how beautiful it is. And everything here we we don't want eaten by our animals we fence off. So that's why this is fenced off. I kept it like that on the bottom so the guardian dogs could go in there and enjoy the shade. And they do. It's one of my favorite things about this. Oh, and of this. Are you supposed to be eating the lilacs? No. So this is the mill. And it's a Grandberg International Alaskan Small Chainsaw Log Mill. It's really easy to put on and to use. And I made another video that we'll put on the description below this video. And you can also link on it if you want to see in detail how the chainsaw mill works. But basically, you just take your chainsaw and you put your bar in this little space here. You use your chainsaw tool and you just slide it in. <clears throat> all the way in and then you tighten it on the other side you would tighten these up but you want to make sure that your bar is up and not on the chain the way it is now you want to tighten it just on the bar like right up there okay and then you can set 
easily set. Let me take this out of here because it's not really on to be used right now. And make sure to use a bar made of steel. It's recommended to use a bar made of steel, not a laminated bar. Right now I have a laminated bar on it because I was actually cutting other wood. But when I was chainsaw milling, I used my bar made of steel. And I also used a ripping chain. Right now I don't have my ripping chain on there because I was cutting other wood. I was finished with the planks. So yeah, a bar made of steel and a ripping chain is the best. And then the way you set the depth that you want to cut for your wood is right here. You can loosen these and you can pull this up to any, let's see here, to any depth you want it up to 14 at the very top inches. So I chose just an inch and it's worked really well for just a privacy fence. And then you tighten it back up when you set the depth that you want. And one thing about chainsaw milling, it makes a lot of sawdust, which that makes me happy because I use sawdust for composting. It has the carbon. So if you have a lot of nitrogen and you want to add carbon, save your sawdust. Here's a bucket. I just save them in buckets and then I put the lids on them and put them, put them somewhere like in my garage and you have really nice sawdust. And these are the slabs that are also a product of making the planks. So the planks are the center cuts and then you get the slabs, which are the top round piece where the bark is. And we're gonna use these actually today for the inner walls of the alpaca enclosure of a section of it. It just gives it a really nice look. And I think the alpacas like the wood in there as much as we do, I think. So we're gonna do that today. Thanks for watching and make sure to check out the chainsaw video if you wanna learn more about how the mill works in more detail and how you put it together and if you haven't subscribed feel free to subscribe if you liked it we do a lot of animal videos a lot of guardian dog videos and just life on our farm and also make sure to hit the bell we're approaching at this point as you're watching it we're getting closer to 5,000 subscribers but when I look at like who watches them we get a lot of new people and a lot of people that subscribe I don't think get notified that we have a new video if you don't hit that little bell icon so if you want to get notified of every time we have a new video out make sure to hit the bell and thanks for watching i hope you guys are having a wonderful fall autumn wherever you are what you do is you take your chainsaw and usually i'm not up here on a table doing it <laughs> hold on a second let's see let's use my right hand Usually I'm not doing it like this. Usually I'm not trying to display it. Hold on, let me, let me use that again. This is not how I do it. It's not how I normally do it. That just needs loosened a little bit more. <laughs> let me get that. <laughs> I usually do this on the ground because it's easier for me. <laughs> All right, so when that's loosened up enough, you put your chainsaw bar in there. This always works really, really easily. That would normally be on there tighter. Then you set, let me get this on. Oh my gosh.